Hey guys, thanks for watching Ike Live. It's brought to you by Mystery Tackle Box. Please check them out. They've got a great product. Go to mysterytacklebox.com. If you use the coupon code Ike Live, you get 50% off Sweet. your first Pro Box. That's $12.50. <laughs> For a almost $50 value of baits in this box. Folks at home, folks at home, welcome back to Ike Live. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday evening. I know we are. Uh, we're enjoying the night. We're reminiscing about old times. Uh, if you didn't already know, this is the last official Ike Live show in the original studio. A lot of memories bouncing off these walls, Brian the Carpenter. Mm -hmm. Memories. Yes. yes. All alone. A lot of memories. Uh, anyway, let, let me remind everybody watching, we want to hear from you. If you've got a question or a comment, please patch them through the IM. We've got Rich, a.k.a. Riz, hey, hey. ready to, uh, to, to answer your questions and, yes. and patch them through. Yes. You got anything, Riz, that, that bottled up there that you want to? <laughs> yes. What do you got? Matt in Wisconsin wants to know, is there a White Claw shortage in New Jersey? <laughs> I don't know. What's up with the whole White Claw thing? I don't know. I haven't ever even had one. Yeah. You have one? Is that a thing right now? Yeah. There's a shortage? I don't know. They're like That means there's too many women drinkers. Is that what it is? Women? Yeah, isn't that like a woman drink? I don't know. Miss Rebecca, what's your drink of choice? What is it? <laughs> let's, let's start with the shorter list. No, uh. what what is your drink of choice? <laughs> drink of choice, Beck. Uh, I Obviously, it's a Founders, but after a Founders. After, after a Founders. If, yeah, if I'm drinking beer, it's Founders, because um, I like the Masagave. Oh, my that, God. That's, oh, dude. That, that's a good one. Love it. Um, that's a really good one. I'm a wine drinker. I love a good Prosecco or sparkling, and then... Secondary would be vodka. Okay, okay. Mike, Chad in Canada wants to know, does the new Ike Live studio look a lot like the Scuttlebutt Lounge? <laughs> What's the Scuttlebutt Lounge? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know, but I like the question. Uh, the, uh, the new Ike Live studio... Wait, we, have we told people about the studio? No, let's give them a little hint, because I'll be excited to hint at it. And then when they tune in to the next show... Mike likes to give a hint. I like, a hint. To, I like to give a hint about a hint. Uh, the new Ike Live studio is very much has a lodge feel to it, Pete. Mm. Um, uh, it, it almost feels like you'll be walking into an old hunting or fishing lodge. You're gonna see you're gonna see that lodge feel to it. The other big thing, and Brian the Carpenter, I know, I, is very excited about this as I am, is it is more open air. This is a bigger studio where the actual guys in the booth aren't separated they aren't in a window they aren't in a different room it they're going to be really a part of the show so you're going to see a more communal space with more participation from people i'm excited man and and once again the technology of the av is going to be a lot better so we're going to have on paper a better show without further ado, Michael. <laughs> we're going to have a better show brian de carpenter i do want to call you to the plate on something real quick you got a uh trip to chicago call to the plate I got a, got a trip to Chicago coming up real quick. I want to say you got a stray cast appearance coming up. Is that true or false? Uh, I believe so. It should be uh, what uh, a week from Wednesday, say October 9th or tenth or something like that. Eighth on a Wednesday. Yeah, I'll, I'll be out in Chicago. You're gonna be in studio with stray cast. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for it, man. Are you gonna be like learning? Or are you gonna be all on the producer tip? Or are you just gonna be straight up guest? I'm gonna be a guest. <clears throat> I'm gonna take it over. Pat's very regimented. He's got his shit, and everybody follows line. I'm there to fuck it up. So. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Pat right. is a man well, of morals. Yeah. All right, man. We got a guest. All we right. Got a well, tell tell the homies a straight cast said hello. We'll do. All right. What's up, homies? All right, Pete. We've been waiting for this all night. This is you know a lot of times on Ike Live. You know what we do? We save the best for the third segment, and of course we did in this segment as well. Uh, it means a lot too because. You know, a special guest like this on the last Ike Live show in the studio makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, and I tell you, we've interviewed a lot of people before from different walks of life, from athletes to actors to MMA fighters, 
uh, everything, everything in between. Professional athletes. Professional athletes, uh, men, women. I don't know how much longer that our guests will sit. D- different yeah, genders. Yeah, like Let's drag this intro out a little longer. Time for the show <laughs> Quiet. Now. Quiet. I thought a lot about this intro. Uh, and uh, I don't know that we've ever quite had a, a guest like this before. What would you say about that, Pete? <laughs> Never. Never. Never in history. All right. So joining us. Officially, for the first time on Ike Live. It's like intentional sabotage. And I'm very, very excited. How handy. We have the one and only <laughs> Rue the Bass Dog joining us Roo, on Ike Live. Rue, 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 Rue. 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 Okay, <laughs> man. Uh, so uh, before, before we let Rue speak, <laughs> I want to let everyone know that Rue is a she, and she's beautiful. Look at that beautiful gal. Sitting right there next to the trophy. Look at her. Look, she's already talking. She is a rescue, Pete, from the slums of Dallas. Okay? She was housed in a tiny commune with over 30 other pups. <laughs> Worms, fleas, <laughs> the SARS disease. Uh, and she was rescued. She was rescued. She happens to be an Australian... What is that word? What's How like? appropriate. Go for it. Kelpie? Kelpie Dash Hound Mix, which is a beautiful Dashound. mix. Beautiful mix. Uh, and there she goes. And, uh, you know, the big thing right now is, Pete, I want to ask Rue some questions. So let me just get to it. Rue, how are you tonight? I'm going good, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I am a girl, but I've got a, uh, got a husky male voice it's, uh, <laughs> I was born with it. well rue let me tell you your your voice is perfect it's it's everything i imagined rue you know? rue Ru speaks very good english for but- being australian <laughs> <laughs> you're a star rue <laughs> now now rue uh, t- tell us a little bit about your your parents about your owners uh you know that we've had them on studio before and they're really they're great people do you want to you want to give them a shout out? You want to say anything about them? I do. They uh, they were the first ones to get me into fishing from when I was a kid. They uh, they were the first ones to take me, and uh, ever since I I bit that first bass and uh, took the scales off it, I've uh, been hooked ever since. Wow! Wow! What a great that's a great intro to the sport. Now we've seen a we've seen we've seen a lot of really unique entries into the sport of professional bass fishing over the last say 20 years uh marizu shimizu ish monroe uh pete glusick an early pete glusick um how did it come that you were a professional uh um a bass fishing dog yeah, just uh, just was born into it when I uh, when I first got out there. Just tried to uh, stay humble from you know where I came from out of that uh, that cold kennel in Dallas. And uh, once I hit the water, I knew uh, this was the this was the new life. And my dad showed me everything uh, everything I know now, and that's why you see the trophy I'm sitting beside. Wow! Yeah, wow! There. We love that. We love that yeah. thing. It's got to stay next to your trophy at all times. Now, who do you credit? as being the biggest inspiration for you in, in your professional dog uh, bass fishing career? It has, to be, it has to be Lassie for sure. Lassie! No, no, Lassie was, yeah. She was the first one on TV that she saw, and I just wanted to be a superstar ever since I've seen Lassie. She was the one. Wow. Well, wow. All right, now, Rue, the, the questions continually get tougher and tougher, as you know, this is Ike Live. Uh, who's your ride or die? Ride or die is uh, my mum, Kayla. Ah! She, uh, yeah. She doesn't... Uh, Ride or I die? I don't even have to ask her for food, and she just delivers it morning and night every single time. Wow. <laughs> what, what's a ride or die? Pete's confused by the term ride or die. <laughs> we don't have time, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't have time. We'll, expl- we'll explain it after Ruth falls asleep. <laughs> now... <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you prefer kibbles or bits? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, there's been some famous bass dogs in the history of, of fishing, Pete, as you know. Uh, of course, Jerry McInnes yes. with the hot dog dog before he yeah. ruined the sport of bass fishing. Um, we've got Mark Menendez 
And his wonderful dog yeah, that we saw. He had a at lab, the, right? Yeah. yeah, he had a lab. And of course, we saw Mark's dog at the 2003 Bassmaster yeah. Classic. Chuck Economo was the Chuck first Economo one to bring a dog. Had a dog. Had a bird dog. Right. And he also brought a lot of marijuana on the boat. Um, Gary Yamamoto. <laughs> Gary Yamamoto, of course. Of course. What's he has the little, little tiny, what are they, chi- yeah, he's got the little chihuahuas, like, the little floofy yeah. things yeah. in the yeah. stroller. All right, so that's a long list. Rue, basically, here's the question: How does it feel to be the the biggest star now in bass fishing dogs? Because you are, obviously. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> feel, uh, <laughs> the Instagram, the Instagram, uh, Instagram's growing, and uh, that's that's always a good thing. So, just, uh, if you want to follow me, Rue the Bass Dog, and uh, that's where uh, that's where it's at. <laughs> there you have it. Rue has a bigger following than Pete. <laughs> <laughs> and post more <laughs> and it was way more active <laughs> all right rue last last question um we know we know the time limitations you know we got to get your sleep it's really important uh we had a message come through and we heard a rumor we need to first of all ask if this rumor is true and then want to ask the follow-up question is it true that you're going to be the ring bearer in in your your parents' wedding here in a couple weeks. Is that true? Yep, that is true. Oh, Rue! Congratulations, Rue. That's a big responsibility. Wow. Yeah, I'm not real reliable, and I'm thinking about messing it all up, but we'll just have to see what happens on the day. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so are you nervous at all about this job? Because being a ring bearer, that's an important thing, Pete. Yeah, they just keep the food coming, and they might see the ring. We'll, we'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Well, Rue, let me tell you, we've had some great interviews on this show. Uh, Pete, I would I would put this one right up at the top, and uh, I, I can't I can't say I, I want Rue to just keep catching them in every event. You know. <laughs> there you have it, Rue the Roo. dog, everybody. Roo. Yeah, Rue. Rue, 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 Rue. Good job, Rue. All right, now we get to the real. <laughs> CJ. Uh, that went how you going, guys? Carl, how you doing, man? Yeah, first of all, dude, congrats. I'm so dude, I'm so happy. I'm so proud of you. I just I, you know, Pete, you know when somebody wins and you just you feel like great about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I feel. I, I feel that same way. Congratulations, bro. Great congratulations. win. Yeah, great bro, win. Bro, congratulations. Bro, I feel so I appreciate it. So amazing. It, uh, it means a lot. Bruce means died. a lot, and the positivity and the um and the just the calls and the messages from a lot of my um you know the peers and and competitors and just everyone. It it de- definitely means a lot because I sort of know what it means. Certain people win and stuff, and makes you feel like um you can do it or they do it the right way. And there've been people like that through my career, and it's given me a lot of inspiration. So I hope uh. I hope a lot of guys uh, can sort of see see that and and get the same as what they've done for me. Yeah, well, it, it's it's awesome. It's uh, it's a big moment. Um, you know, winning is is tough, Pete. It's well, tough to get over the hump. You know, it's tough to to win to actually get there. You put yourself in a position, but to actually do it to win an event, it's a very very difficult thing. And and you did it. You did it, Carl. And and you feel great about it. I feel great. About I feel it. I. You know, I was. I loved watching it. I was, Me too. I was rooting for you so much. But what was cool was they. They uh, all the elite anglers stayed. Like when Rick Clun won, the elite anglers hung around. Yeah. To watch him. Yeah. Win, and 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 I heard that they did that for you too. A lot of the guys hung around, and they were they were really tickled to see you win that big trophy. Yeah, it was cool. When I was on stage um, there at one, you know, one time, I looked over and you know there was ten or more elite series guys. And when I first pulled into the car park, like guys that didn't make the cut and uh, you know guys that it didn't it really even get a check were still there and they were all you know they'd been watching and they were coming up to the boat and just shaking my hand. They were so pumped and I sort of didn't really know that I'd won yet or whatever, but they were uh, giving me a lot of <laughs> a lot of hope that I'd uh, got it over the line. But it it definitely meant a lot because, um, you know, I've, I've worked hard to, to, 
you know, it's cost me. It's actually cost me a lot of money, a lot of tournaments, a lot of things to to build that reputation of that. I wanted to do things myself, do it the right way, um, do it with honor, and to be able to do it the way I did at that particular tournament. I just, I honestly couldn't have happened at a better time, and the way it happened, I'm really just blown away still. Yeah, it it's it's crazy because we've said how many times, Peter, we said on the show. That, you know, it's sort of like when it's your time to win, you're going to win. And when it's meant to be, it happens. Dude, the, the timing of this to me is just unbelievable. You know, with you guys getting married at yeah. the last term of the year, the momentum that his you'll birthday. draw yeah. into the next year. It was his birthday. It, it's your birthday. <laughs> I mean, there's just yeah. so many things that seem like it was meant to be. Um, yeah. do, do you feel like this win is going to take you to a different place in your fishing career, obviously it's a big deal, right? Because yeah. you, you have a win on your resume now. You, nobody could take that away from you. But from a momentum standpoint, do you think this win is going to be big for you in the next year, two, three, five, ten? Yeah, hun- like one hundred percent. Like I, just the um, you know, I can't tell you like that. You know, most guys have felt it, but you know, I just feel like I've had this like massive like weight over me sort of a cloud over me all the time where like I've, i i'm super positive i'm getting after i'm doing it but i could never like just finish it and i have so many people you know rooting for me and from australia and i have the whole country behind me and nine years is a long time like i went nine years going as hard as i possibly can for zero wins not even like i had you know in in my in a lot of people's books, I had success, and I did have a little bit of success, which gave me boosts. Like making the elites was a huge deal. But then, like I didn't come here just to make the elites and then just get washed away. And that was so like, it was always um, you know for years and years and years, especially you know over the last five mm-hmm. years, I just used to say, man, I just need a break. Like I just haven't had that break. And everyone that um, does something special in a sport. They have a year or one little thing where their break happens and then they they sort of get out of it and they go. And I've just had this, like, thing hold me back where I've had so many defeats, so, like, never yeah. won in nine years straight, not a single win, and just try and stay positive and believe that you can still do it after that long is, you know, it can eat, that's what breaks you or yeah. makes you sort of thing. And, man, when I got that fifth small mouth in on that last day, like it was I, I feel like I can actually be myself now like I've just I've yeah. tried so hard and just done this so much and like so many disappointments in the tournament just before that like came in at Cayuga toughest year I've ever had everything's going wrong getting the feelings back like I did in 16 where we're broke in debt kicked out of the elites all of that's all yeah. coming back and then, and like a ta- the week before, me and Kayla were in the car after day one. I didn't catch a limit, and like I'm crying, she's crying. It's like, it's just sickening. Like, pe- you know, they don't. See- a lot of people see every side of it, but I've just had so much, and like, it's been hard to like beat that, like beat that off of like I am good enough, can do it, and yeah. I'm always, I've, I've always been fighting that in my head, and even, even down to that final day. Like, even when I caught four for 16, I knew it wasn't enough and I had to finish it. And that little win- that window of pressure there was the worst, like, four hours of my life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I, I knew now now I've got the hardest fish in the world to catch in my boat and I've got to finish it. And if I don't, I would have rather come 10th and got a check and been happy to come yeah. up to, like, get married. Now it's I've got to get this fish and I've hit this win- four-hour window of I can't even get a bite. I knew it was going to be like that. And I hooked that small mouth and, you know, I put it in the boat and literally the weight of the entire world yeah. just came off my shoulders. Wow. Like, it was crazy, crazy feeling. Well, and you can yeah. see that in the live coverage. I thought it was really, uh, it was raw. You know, you could, you could feel the energy, you know, you could feel the tension. Mm-hmm. And, and when you caught that fifth one, you could see it. You could literally see it, you yep. know? Lift up. Yeah. Well, well, I uh, I was watching this whole thing unfold, and and I was amazed. That seven minutes was the most <laughs> magical seven minutes in the history of the world. You know, yeah. it, was, it was it was it was awesome. And I remember it was 
10 o'clock in the morning when that had 11 it was early when that went well down. we were watching it in spain so it was actually like <laughs> it was like it was only eight i think it was only eight and nine o'clock it was between okay. eight and nine i think so okay. what would that be on spain time back it was like two in the afternoon it was two in the afternoon in <laughs> <Yeah. Spain. laughs> but but carl i was texting everybody at bass university because you're you know one of our instructors and we love you we've had you with us for a while and and I, we were all pulling for you we we're we we're rooting for you so hard i'm like it's a carl did it at 16 pounds i thought there's no possible way yeah. that he can be caught at 16 pounds and i'm i'm texting everybody and then here comes out yeah yeah and i'm yeah. and i'm like oh man carl's got to get that fifth fish yeah oh shoot i didn't think he needed it so it, it. was pete glusick <laughs> 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 put me through that four hours of hell <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and and that was really cool because uh, take me, take us through that, cause you, uh, you were hung up, and you, you, you pulled that Molex jig off of the tree. You flipped, you popped it off there somehow, and and take us through that moment. That was amazing. Yeah, that's cool. It's um, you know, like Ike said um before, like when everything like magical happens or whatever, and when it's your turn, it's your turn. And I think you know part of that is true, but. When I look back at that fish um, and, and catching that one and, and what was happening is, like, I saw this small tree on my 360 to my right. I call, caught those three big ones in that seven minutes on a real big tree that I found the day before off this ledge. And so I've gone four hours and I haven't got a bite. And all these boats are chasing me. Everything's going down. I, the wind's blowing. My, all of my other spots have got blown out. And that morning bite was so crucial. You had to capitalize. And that's why I actually caught them early because I made some good decisions in the morning to hit better spots early and not waste as much time on this one particular spot. So I've run back there and I've hit the tree for like 40 minutes. Nothing, not a bite. All these boats are watching. I know I need one more fish. And I see this one little tree to my right on 360. And I cast the demolix jig to it, and I'm working it back, working it back, and I'm crawling it as slow as I can. I'm trying to get a bite, and I'm trying to feel that tree. And I'm, I can't feel it, I can't feel it. You watch the footage back, I start winding the jig in, and I'm, like, burning it. So I'm, like, winding quick to get it in, and it, Nick, it hits the top of the tree. It goes, dunk, and hits the tree, and I pull my rod, I, and I, I try and get it to mooch over that tree without getting snagged, and it pops. And when it pops, I click like a hit. And this is all in a split second. It hits the tree. I try and get it off. It pops. I click it into free spool. And the jig drop goes to fall. And then my line just went slack. And, like, I didn't get a bite or anything. I just wound down and set the hook. Oh. And that <laughs> stuff, like, when it's your turn, it's your turn, yes. That was nine years or 20 years <sighs> of my life of fishing. Wow. One second. For that, for that. That thing, if it hit the top of that branch and I kept winding, it I I, don't, I probably don't catch my fifth fish. Like it's that hard. But yes, it has to be your turn, and yes, things have to happen. But that there was twenty years of fishing nonstop wow. for that all was, my life. That was the twenty instinct. years of your hard work, yeah. Carl. That was your yeah, hard work, yeah. your experience, your, yeah. your your trials and tribulations for you to drop that jig down over that limb right there. Yeah. It's that awesome. was it yeah. all culminating for this all to happen. That's awesome. Yeah. That's how, crazy. Yeah. How, how bad would that have sucked if he was 15 and three quarters? <laughs> yeah. I, I caught it in, in that four hour window. I caught two 15 and three quarter large mount. Oh. And, uh, you know, and then something else that happened is like Mullins, Dave Mullins started getting on that pattern. He was offshore. And that like two days before I ran to a spot where I was, Oh, it was, and he was kind of on it. He waved me in, and we fished, and then uh, and then he sort of left. And then that night, he, when I was doing well, he was like, you're going to hit that spot. I think this was going into day four, and I said, yeah, and he said, I'll leave it totally. And I was like, mate, that's awesome. Thank you. And um, But, like, because he was getting dialed in, he was starting to figure it out. And so I run to, like, my third spot, that, that one, and he's not there. And then I run to my next spot, and he's, like, right on – where i want to be and he looks at me and he's like you're kidding me you know and because that's just how it goes yeah. it's just bad timing and he said what do you got and i said four for 16 and he just like put his head back pulled the trolling motor up and idled over to me and he said 
where are you going next? And I said, this <laughs> other spot. And he said, that's where he was going. He's like, all right, I'll leave that too. And he wow. he went. Wow. So it was pretty cool. Wow. David Mullins. Awesome. Shout out to David Mullins. David Mullins. Yeah. Shout wow. out to Mullins yeah. right there. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's how it, it should like, be. It was like, catch a keeper spot and win this thing. I was like, I need any, just anything right now. Wow. And, uh, would that's, be good, a, but... that's a statement yeah. to respect for you. Yeah. Is that a crazy yeah. thing, though? How many times have you heard a story? Because I know with you, Mike, like times that you've won and you've had like a co angler in the boat, and the guy gets in the boat on the last day and just sits down and he goes, even You fish. have a chance to win yeah. this. I'm not messing you up. I'm going to sit here. Like, yeah. It's crazy how, like, there's a lot of those stories for people who have a win. Yeah. There's somebody who said, yeah, that's yours, or no, yeah, I'm not going to yep. fish that. Yeah. Or, all that has to yeah. happen. It yeah. all has to line up. Yeah. You know? I, I yeah. want to give a shout-out to Takahiro Omori, yeah. who did it for me in my first win down on Lake Martin. Wow. I ran, nice. in, I ran into good. him, and uh, I had 12 pounds, and he yeah. goes, Pete, you're going to win this tournament. And he just picked up his trolling motor, and he was fishing right in front of me or in the general area yeah. and just left. Wow. So shout out to T.O. Yeah, shout out to T.O. But he didn't yep. say it like that. He actually said it like this. Pete, you're going to win this tournament. <laughs> I it. leave spot. That's, that's, that's exactly what he said. That's exactly how he said it. Exactly. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good T.O. No round was, of applause for a, me. That was an excellent T.O. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It wasn't. You know it. Pete, you know <laughs> I leave this spot. All right, Riz. Riz, you did hit something. And I want to circle back on uh, with you, Carl. And, and you, Riz, you said Carl works hard, and he does. And he does. and I, dude, I grinder. I love that because I I I like I like hard workers. I I I can tell. You know, I'm I'm out there practicing. I can tell by the way you fish. I can tell by the time you put in. Um, you've got the fear of my heart motto, which ties into that. Dude, we've got a ton of people watching right now that are aspiring anglers, they're doing it, they're semi-pro, they're struggling, you know, they're having hard times, they're having a tough nine years like you've had. Give, give them some advice, because I think your work ethic really has taken you to the next level. And, and, and I, I, I think that's so amazing. But, but give these guys advice. If they're struggling, they're trying to get to the next level, give, give them a little piece of advice. Yeah, for sure. I wish... You know, all I can do is look back at m what I've done and gone through and wish would make and maybe think about what I would have done differently. And I would have trusted the process a lot more. Like, you, all you can do is all you can do as long as it's all you can do. And that was <laughs> my thing. Like, I've got to do every single thing I can do. What can I do to be to be the best, you know, person, to be the best on the water, yeah. every single little aspect of it to my sponsors. Um, I never just focused on, I had one goal, but I focused on a lot of different things. And if I, I wish I trusted the process and the timing a lot more so that I could let myself relax a little bit and enjoy and take it all in. Because um, if you don't, then you're going to go through a lot, a lot of years just not enjoying it because yeah. you're trying to get to this end thing so much that um, everything else takes like a back step. And you gotta, you got to survive the longest. Like it's, it's a game of, you know, surviving. And you guys come in and they get lucky and they win early or whatever. They don't get lucky, but they can. And they win early. A lot of those guys... You know, ten. There's guys that have won millions of dollars that aren't even bass fishing anymore, or that I've surpassed for years, years ago that were hugely successful because that early success sometimes isn't the best thing for you. Yeah. And I am so thankful for my nine years of hardest grinding, getting my butt warped every brick wall. I'm thankful for every one of them now. So. At the time, I'm like, why is this happening to me? And why, <laughs> yeah. look at all these people winning. Like, yeah. everyone's winning. Everyone's got this money. Everyone's doing this. Success all around me. Why can't I do it? And then, bang, like, I was doing the right thing all along. I just had to, like, wait. So just, I'd say, work as hard as you possibly can. Do the right things. Do it for the right reasons. Um you know, you better love it more than anything. It has to be not a thing that you just want to do. It has yeah. to be something that you can't live without. 
Yeah. And that's the sort of thing that pushed me through the hard times is there was there was no other option. It was like, yeah. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to end up here. I just got to keep on going. And that doesn't mean I had, ton, you know, had lots of bad days and had days where I thought about giving up. But I rested, recovered, got my energy back and go again. And uh, just, I would say, trust the process, work as hard as you can. And um, just don't be so, so hard on yourself because this is a tough, tough sport and you've got to survive it as long yeah. as you can. So yeah. enjoy it. Enjoy the journey, the process along the way and know that when the time is right, if you've been doing the work, it'll happen. Man, that's great. Great pieces of advice. Uh, if you're watching and listening, you're struggling, you want to do it, great piece of advice. Let me remind everybody, uh, IMs are open. If you've got a question for Carl right now, you got a question about his win or anything, or Rue the dog, uh, we hit a hit up Riz. He's going to get him. Riz, what do we got? We got a couple coming through? Yep. Uh, Howie Range would like to Howie, know. Howie, shout out uh, to Howie. Carl, talk a little bit about uh, what it was like to leave Australia and come over to the U.S. Uh, to pursue your dream of fishing. Um, yeah, that was definitely the toughest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Um, you know, when people see, you know, holding a trophy or see what you're going through, that comes with tons and tons of sacrifice and um, it was my birthday on uh, on Sunday last week, and I just realized like I hadn't spent uh, my birthday with my family or friends back home for nine years. And, um, you know, that doesn't mean much to some people or whatever, but like my family and my friends were everything to me. I spent 26 years in Australia just living and breathing, fishing, hunting, family and friends. And to, to pack all that up and leave was um, definitely one of the hardest things I've ever done. Um, but also I could see the bigger picture and that something I had an opportunity that and, and it was something that I couldn't feed by any other way but like going all in and chasing it and it was uh it's been the biggest life lessons and it, you, all those tough ones have turned me into the person I am today and I think I'm the, the best version of myself if I can possibly be because of all those brick walls and tough times and getting around them somehow but um, America is a big culture shock. It's a lot different to Australia, but um, I just love it. Like I lo like a lot of people in America say certain things that they live here. It's the it is an amazing country. The people are incredible. The fishing, the hunting, the way that um, America like looks after the fisheries and and their wildlife and the way they take in um, the outdoors and fishing is like it's a dreamland. For, for an Australian like when we come over here it's just mind blowing and and um to to see that from a kid and living in Australia for 26 years where I was kind of like on the outer for fishing like it was unheard of no one fished it was very tough to be cool because I fished or anything like that and I got a lot of hell for, for it through school teachers and all that we're here it's embraced and um if you live here and you're born here, like you just you need to take all of that in and love every second because it's a pretty it's a pretty cool deal. I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. Riz, what else you got coming through? It's funny that he says it was it's not cool over in Australia. You know, it, we struggle with that a little bit too here. But early, right. yeah, early on we did. Yeah, I think here, I think it's changed. Here, I think it's changed. Yeah, it's definitely changed now, and even in Australia, like it's changed. We have. We've imported American bass boats and just even this, the, with me coming over and more Australians coming over and fishing, getting some of actual publicity, it's, it's definitely changed. But, you know, as a kid, for me, growing up right through in, my, through in my early 20s, it was, yeah, it was unheard of. It was weird that you're a fisherman. Like, no one thought anything of that. Where now, especially in America, college kids and the boats and trucks. Yeah, like so, That was always yeah. my dream. It's just like, I want fishing to be cool. And yeah. I could see it in my head, and I wanted other people to see that and feel it. And now with the bass boats, the trucks, the you know, that's why America is that dreamlands because we see the big trucks, the bigger boats, the lakes, and, and just how they do things here. It's, it's um you know, you guys in, in America, Bassmaster, they create the – the story and and make it look amazing and all these young guys now, now that are out there doing the um filming and photography like the the you know what brandon's doing and everyone that it's making fishing you know look like a high-end 
um, sport and an actual real sport, which it is. And that's what I've always wanted, just that fishing to actually look like a professional sport and be along those lines. And it's right there, I think, right there at it. Yeah. Did uh, did the is it a president or prime minister of Australia? Did they give you a call? <laughs> prime minister? No, he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> it's, it's, Not yet. <laughs> yeah, my hometown. My hometown's uh, pretty. Yes, everyone. Every fishing thing has gone kind of crazy. But um, in in media, it's so hard. Like I would have to go out and actually pursue the channels to actually get it going i've been on the today show in australia and fox sports which are big mainstream channels but i i had to like go through the hoops to make it happen it's very hard to get them to yeah. chase it down but my local news channel and stuff in brisbane that area all put it on the news and stuff as i was in i was on the back page of a lot of papers in australia so that was, that was kind of cool that's cool well that's very you're, cool you're the first australian to win a bass elite event nobody could ever take that away from you so that's and a great that's awesome. champion that's a awesome good champion. champion yes great champion thank you guys uh, uh, i want to let me ask you something real quick carl this is just a yeah. little tidbit question are you glad your first big win was in BASS and not FLW? Would this mean less if it would have happened last year fishing FLW? Um, yeah, the timing is, you know, is definitely perfect. And I think this, like, honestly, I could not have written it. Like, I couldn't have written it if it was a movie. Like, I, I don't know. Heck, that's why now I'm like, man, I need to trust the timing of everything because I honestly believe if I won Gunnersville when I had a shot there, like in 15, like it just wouldn't have had the effect and impact it had because it's not about me as much as it is about like all these people that had believed in me for so long, kids and everyone back in Australia that's following along. Like I wanted to do it for them to show them like you're right. Like I had so much support that I just hated that. I was like, I felt like I was letting everyone down. I wanted to be like this. I want to show you like, I know I can do it. I believe I can do it. And, um, it was just Bassmaster was always the dream. It has been since I was a kid watching it, um, the format, the way it ha way they do everything. Um, that That's where I wanted to be. And even though I got relegated and moved to FLW, and it, that, that was a huge part of my life and career. And if I didn't do that, wouldn't have ended up here. So I'm thankful yeah. for FLW too because it gave me somewhere to go and still compete against high-end guys and um, and and fish like that where my sponsors would still follow me across but to that blue trophy like you said like the money is unbelievable it's changed our life um and all all the stuff that comes with it but that when i got my hands on that blue trophy yeah. like it's the phone's yeah. leaning on it now i just can yeah. stare at it and just yeah. start laughing. Yeah. it's special that's a Woo. special special thing all right carl before we let you go uh do we have to ask you a little bit about you got a wedding coming up in, in a little bit uh, yeah. you guys, you guys are an amazing couple. You want to, you want to spill the beans? You got any plans for the wedding, honeymoon? Fill us in. What do you got coming? Well, we didn't have anything, but now things might have changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! Um, it's really, really special. Like I got 35 Australians coming over, um, to, to be yeah. here for the wedding. And, uh, some of them I haven't seen for years. My mum has never really left my hometown hardly and she's flying over here. So that's just crazy. Um, uh, my sister and her little two little kids are coming over, um, with her husband and then a bunch of my friends that, you know, just haven't been to the States before. So the Aussies are definitely going to turn it into a party, especially nice. with, uh, with what just happened. My 82 year old granddad and grandma who got me into fishing as a kid, like he took us to the river, sacrificed so many weekends just showing us um, the outdoors and that experience. Everyone has that that person and that mine was my granddad that really um, fed the fed my a passion for fishing. He could see it and he's gonna he's flying over with my grandma and I'm gonna be able to like hand him this trophy. It's gonna be pretty special. Wow, that's um, awesome. We're getting married on Coeur d'Alene Lake in Idaho where Kayla's from. And uh, her mom and Kayla have been working super hard. It's a beautiful spot. And uh, we're going to come in on the boat and we're going to get some boat shots. And my be my groomsman and best man, Chris, are gonna, we're going to fish in the morning and stuff in our suits in the boat and just do some stuff like yeah. that. So everyone's hanging around until about the 20th of October. So we're just going to hang here and hang with family and just have a great time. I can't wait. It's a pretty special time of our lives. I'm 
I'm, I'm so it just like can't believe. I mean, Kayla just look at each other and we're just like, how is this happening? From like <laughs> crying in the truck at Cayuga to like now is wow. ridiculous. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, no, it, it, it's dude, it couldn't happen. happen to a better person. It couldn't happen to a better couple. I'm so happy for you, both you guys. And, uh, man, we're we're proud of you. We're yeah. excited. We feel like we won with you. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, yes. We, we love That's it, Carl. We love it. Congratulations. It awesome. Congrats, Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. I've always appreciated your support, and it means means the world to me. And uh, just being on here and, you know, seeing Ike and you guys just support me, you know, way back when is, is pretty awesome. So, it's uh, it's always appreciated, and anytime I can be on here, look forward to catching up next time. You got it. We'll see you, Carl. See you, Carl. Yeah. See you guys. Good, Good night. Thanks, Good night. Rue. Thanks, Rue. Thanks, <laughs> Rue. 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 Dude, I love it. Isn't that a great story? Uh, that was yeah. a great story. His, God, his, a his whole story. speech, and even on the boat and on the podium, yeah. I mean, I was locked yeah. in. Oh, like, yeah. I, I don't know. Dog barking, somebody at the door, kids screaming. Didn't matter. There was it some. Lock. You. There was yeah, some was. good storylines this year in bass fishing across all of them. FLW, Major League Fishing, Bass Masters. But I, I got to tell you, with the exception of Rick Clun, I think this is one of the yeah. best stories of the year. Yeah, the Latimer, yeah. Latimer's win. Latimer's Rick win. Clun's, and, Clun's and big. Were, were the three. Yeah. Really big. Stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you I, saying Edwin's two wins in Major League Fishing, winning? Uh, Angler of the Year and winning the MLF Championship doesn't rank in the top three. Touch me the same way. Uh-huh. Not lying. So, but but you know I talked you know, to Carl earlier about you know the timing of things. Yeah. And even like we've had Carl on several times. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we had Carl on way back. You know when he almost won Gunnersville. You know, in his truck, skyped us from his truck. You weren't here for that show. You can have yep, me on again. Yeah. Right. And and you know and he said <laughs> all the same things that he's been preaching the whole way through about. The, the, the t- determination and everything else yeah. and just super inspirational stuff and then we had him on again after Winya Bay and you know that was a completely different show and a lot of drama a lot of, <laughs> a lot of negative yeah. negative shit happened yeah. and even even in that and the 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 fallout from that situation yeah probably because of that maybe because of that you know he's in bass right now and never got the invite over to somewhere else yeah you know to mlf because the fallout with Boyd. i think he's probably happy that you know things just happen for a reason things happen for a reason yeah Yeah. things happen the way they're supposed to happen you don't see it at the time no but like you said you could not have written this story yeah it was perfect you got to go through the struggle and he did oh yeah and now he's there who else is going through a struggle and maybe one of the biggest stories of the year is if Chris Zaldane wins AOY. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a huge story. That would be ah, that I don't would know be about struggle, story. dude. He's got three second-place finishes. No, he, he – yeah. Chris, yeah. It's a Chris great story. Yeah, but, but, to, but to, missing but to, it. Missing but it, the second. To the, the competitor that yeah. needs to win. Agreed. Yeah. You know, who's yeah. going to satis- be satisfied with second? Yeah. Chris yeah. is on top of the world right now. Yeah. Finishing I, second I, hurts. Yeah, yeah. bridesmaid hurts. Yeah, I think he's going to win. Chris you think so? Win. Chris for the win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or Johnson. I wouldn't count out the Johnson. Dude, you heard it here first. But Chris, Chris for the win. Zaldane. Let's put the two more names. Right. Zaldane for the win. Say it, Mike. Uh, Zaldane for the win. Yeah. Facts. All right, Mike's picking Zaldane. Who's everybody else picking? Zaldane. Zaldane? Yeah. I got Zaldangerous, baby. Zaldangerous for the win. Dave wants I to know, know who Chris Zaldane is. The magic mustache. I- <laughs> the magic mustache is I Zaldane. want Zaldane to win. But I, I, I think Canterbury's going to adjust. Isn't isn't Chris land. Trait's boyfriend? They're married. Ah, I think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> it's, They're it's, it's married. It's very hard to be the Mike to be the hunted phone yeah. line. Yeah. Huh? Phone it's hard line. to be the hunted phone line. Yeah. Let's yeah. open up phone lines real quick though. Before we do that, Dave, let me put you on the spot real quick. Just grab a mic real quick. Get it. I saw a picture Uh-oh. of our very own Dave Brodzik oh. on a Hobie kayak. At one of our old stomping grounds, Peak Lusick, Almanesson Lake. What? Yes. Kayak with only. a giant, definitely six pound class Ready to fish. Destroy that place. Definitely yeah. six pound class Charge fish. Charge the batteries. Well, tell me a little bit about that. Charge your yeah. kayak batteries. That was pretty awesome. So it's 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 a it's now a kayak only place. It's kayak a place only? that Brian and Mike and I 
And it may have even been one of our secret lakes that we kept it from our other friends. Secret. Until now. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, we as, as kids, we had secret lakes that yeah. only certain, like Mike and I had a couple secret lakes that were our own. Brian had a couple. Anyway, it was stupid. But <laughs> so anyway, no, I got him Secretly on. You know, it was light line. Like it was either eight. <laughs> it was either like eight or ten pound p line. You know, with a little, uh, you know, eighth ounce bitsy jig, and uh, yeah, it was a big fish, man. Fought him for a long time on the kayak. It was you know, the biggest fish I got this year. Did he pull you around? It was cool. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. They do pull you in the kayak, yeah. but funnier than that, dude. So I race. Like so, there's there's a couple juice banks there, and I'm you know there were so many cars in the parking lot with roof racks so i was like oh god so there's this armada of like old people and paddle kayaks right and they're old like i'm talking like my mom's 80 the oldest lady was probably about my mom's age but she was like a young like, like a skinny spry old lady well so i ra- so i race over to my bank and i you know because I, I know if they get there they're going to snag and they're going to mess it all up they're going to you know so I, I I cut them off. I get to it. <laughs> so they go around me, and the, the old ladies cut last. Off the old people, right? So the old ladies last, and she's like, "You getting any?" I'm like, "Ah, couple. How you doing?" She's like, "Ah, I'm throwing this crankbaity thing, and I got this other thing." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's cool." She's like, "Well, I don't know why the hell it's cool, but that's what I'm using." <laughs> <laughs> I swear, man, it would crack me up. I felt like, like, like you, you going to answer just, me like that? Like, I don't even want to talk to you. You yeah. started talking to me. Congenial, like, man. She's yeah. just ripping But she you. was to the point. But, I mean, what else do I say? Like, I felt like saying, what What else should I have buffered that way? Because I don't want to talk to you. Uh, like, you didn't have to ask me. I didn't ask you how you were doing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Get out of here. Only at yeah. Almanessa. Yeah. Like she's probably related to you in some yeah. way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but she said, I don't know why the hell that's cool. <laughs> I never had my, like... Horrible conversation, passing the time type yeah. shit thrown back at me before, you know? Can I say something real quick? Yes. Before oh you God. put the phone callers through, can you, like, weed out the callers? <laughs> because you have, like, this thing about what, putting a qualifier? the most, like, a qualifier? boring phone callers through. So can we, we make sure we get some good ones we if we're going to talk about it? Screen the calls. Uh, we need a call screen. Can we screen them? We need a qualifier. All right, caller, what's your name? Where are you call from? Am I on the line? Yeah. Yes, call, <laughs> caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Exactly. This, uh, this is Travis G from Wisconsin. Travis, how you doing tonight? What's your question? Pretty, pretty Go good. Well, I, I didn't have much of a question, but uh, earlier in the show you asked uh, some of your favorite or least favorite moments yes. of yes. the show. Yes. Yes. When you uh, prank called Bass Pro Shop and uh, pretended to be that grandma. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, would, I laughed my ass off at work listening to that, and everyone wow. in the break room was looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I, and, Travis, and, I agree with you. I would put that as one of the highlights of the show. In fact, that was, that yep. was the call that got, got us banned, banned from Bass Pro Shops. We got to wow. find out tonight if we're still on the block list. We got to find out if we're still on the block list. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. That's a good one. All right, tra- uh, Travis. Travis. Y- yeah, hit hang me up. it. Travis, you're a good caller. You're Thanks a good caller. You you may have won. You just may have won something, yeah, Travis. Hit, hit me up in the DMs, Travis. I'll yeah. Are. All right, I got you. All right, see you, buddy. Peavy's from Wisconsin. All right, thanks. All right, Wisconsin. Yeah, Sorry we know Travis G. Mike, you met him. What do you mean? Yeah, he, oh, he Travis. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's the bomb. Oh, yeah. He's the bomb. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. Travis. Yeah, sorry, Travis. Mm. Sorry we put the beat down on you guys. Yeah, speaking of Travis. No one else is calling after Beck. Did you know, uh, did everyone yeah, in this room know? They're like, they're they're like so we're, we know we're boring. We're not calling. I you know, like uh, Travis. He was great, but you know yeah. the callers that I'm talking oh, yeah. about, yeah, everyone. And he won something. <laughs> All right, let me remind everybody watching and listening. We have a phone up right now if you want to call. Talk to us live, 856-521-0515, Pete. Mm. Will that you number know, change in the new studio? I don't know. I don't know either. That's a good question. You know what's funny? When we were watching Carl up yeah. on the screen, yeah. it, it, uh, it, his name was Rue's dad. Rue's dad. Oh, that was funny. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, All right. Funny. We got another call. I was pretty impressed that Rue stayed put for that I know. Yeah. He did. I know. Yeah, uh, through Mike's painful intro. <laughs> my pain. Whatever. You yeah. know it was good. Uh, caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Jer- Jerry from New Hampshire. Jerry! How you doing tonight? Hey, not bad. I finally made it on the Ike Live show. Yeah, Jerry! <laughs> What's your question? All right, I've been, 
I've been watching Ike forever. I got Ike Live stickers at least on my boat. But I got a twofold yeah. question. Yes, twofold. Okay, shoot. All right, the first one is we need some tips for fall transition smallmouth. That's one. And Ike, is there anything that you miss about being in bass? Okay. Wow. There are two good, good ones. Questions. There are two great questions. Tech head question and a controversial I question. I like them both. All right. Fall transition, smallmouth Pete. You want to go for this one? Yeah. Well, take a second one. Why? I, t- I tell you this. We just because we just blasted them uh, in the uh, in the one hour beatdown derby that we had before dark on Lake Champlain. <laughs> and they and, were transitional there. Yeah. They Big time. the. What what happens is you're going to get a shallow water movement, and one of the best ways to catch them is on a spinner bait, and uh, we used a spinner bait and a wiggle wart to catch the fish that are the the perch, the alewives. Everything is going to start moving a little bit shallower as the water temperature falls. So yes, go go spinner baiting, yeah. go crank baiting. Yeah, it'll be awesome. Yeah, the other thing I'll throw in there for smallmouth transitional fish is the presence of bait. How important that is. Um, when you see perch following your lures up, when you see owlwife and bait on the graph, that's the areas that you want to be fishing. When when there's no bait, it's it gets tough. So bait's yep. so important in fall transition. Second part of the question. <laughs> New studio game. We're going to tie their hands <laughs> behind their backs and see if they can still talk. We cannot talk without <laughs> the hands. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> All right, second part of the question is do I miss do I miss things about bass? Absolutely, I miss things about bass. The the great thing about the sport right now is that I think both circuits provide or all three circuits provide some really unique things. I like the live coverage of MLF, MLF. I like the uh, fish for every keeper you catch. I like that. I like the updates of MLF. I like the periods. I like that stuff. Pressure. The pressure. I like that stuff. I love it. I think there's great things about MLF. But there's also great things about bass. I I I love keeping fish in my live well. I love five fish in my live well. I love culling. I miss culling. I miss bringing the fish to the scales. I miss holding the fish up in front of the crowd. I miss big crowds of people. I miss fans. I miss the fan interaction. So I, you know, there's there's good things and bad things about both circuits. You know, I I hope that the sport one day, whether it's all the leagues combining, or whether it's they all just stay on their own, I hope one day I can participate in all of them instead of just one. You know, that'd that's be cool. that'd be great. That'd be a great time in the sport. You're right. The accomplishment. Yeah, it's yeah. great. I I of think the day. Yeah. I yeah. think both yeah. circuits have a lot of merit, so there's definitely some things that I miss about bass as well. So that was a good question. Good question. Good answer. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you finally calling in the last show in the old studio. Woo! Oh, I look, I look forward to the new studio as well. You're going to like it. You're going to like it a lot. Just keep watching. I... Will do. All right. Thank you for the call. That was a good one, Beck. That wasn't that crappy No, I liked, I liked it. <laughs> You're waiting for the two rubber for worm question, aren't you? Although I did almost say you can tune in to Bass University for the first part, but I did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was fifty technical and fifty yeah. regular, controversial. Controversial. I'm not drinking. All right. So, so nice. why we're waiting for the next? <laughs> why we're waiting for the next phone call? You want to open this mystery tackle box and we'll just go around and look at it. Yes. Let's do that. All right. Who doesn't love a good tackle box? All right. I'm going to start and uh, let me remind everybody: this is your chance to call in. This is the last call-in in the old studio. In this studio. This is pretty important. You guys are acting like we're dying or something. We're like literally no, I know. shifting. Well, I know. Oh, I'm, I know, I'm telling you, we've been here music. for six years. I know. It's a long time. That's a I long know. time. You've thing. been in my basement for six years. <laughs> Get out of my basement. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, Pete, I, I just... We, pro- well, <laughs> uh, we wanted to be upstairs. As man. you know, <laughs> Ike Live <laughs> is the only live podcast that does a mystery tackle box unboxing. Pete, we're going to be unboxing a MTB Pro box tonight. One of the great things about mystery tackle box comes to your doorstep once a month. It forces you, puts in your hands lures that you may never have tried on your own. Mm-hmm. 
I love that about Mystery Tackle Box. I love that, too. We're going to open it up. We're each going to pick one. Me, you. We're going to pass it to the couch of Miss Rebecca. And uh, New Jersey champion, uh, uh, next Bassmaster qualifier over there, is going to also help us with this. Yeah. We're going to look you're through going. here. I'm no going. pressure. No pressure. I have a feeling you're going to. I really do. I have a feeling. I got a good feeling about it. Uh, man, a lot of cool baits in here. Uh, I'm going to go with this crazy thing, Pete. I'm going to pass it to you. And we've got... Sculpins? Yes. I went for something crazy. We've got a Savage Gear... Uh, this is 3D Gobi tube. If you look at that, look at it. It's got little fins. It almost looks like a part Gobi part tube. Very interesting. I could see that working on Thousand Islands. I could see that working in a place that has Gobies. Maybe a uh, jig head, maybe Texas rigged. That's kind of cool. What do you got there, Pete? Well, this is a bait that... Uh... <laughs> It reminds me of a bait that um, that we used, Dance's Eel. Dance's Eel. Oh, oh, that's that. cool. Dance's Eel. No, this no, isn't no, Dance's Eel. Dancing. Dancing. Bill's Dancing mm. Eel. This is like a frog with a dancing eel. Wow. Dance's Eel tail. It's got a little paddle tail on yeah. it. Yeah. Little kicker legs. It's very unusual. Huh. And I might never throw it. Check but that out. Who's the manufacturer of that, Pete Glusick? This is, uh, I can't read it. Oh, let me see it. That is, uh, that is Chase Baits, the Big Wiggle Bomb. The Big Wiggle Bomb. Frog. Very cool. Interesting. Very neat. Very unique. Very neat. Miss Rebecca, uh, Mr. Callen, what do you got? I have, uh, this looks like a bait from 10,000 Fish, and it's called the uh, Sukoshi Bug. Oh, I know that one. By, That's a Ned Rig by, bait. By the Catch Co., and it is a Ned Rig yeah. bait with the Hilgramite ending. Very cool. Hilgramite. Yep. Right All now, right, I'm telling you, you I'm Elgermite. telling you this, Upper Susquehanna El River, mm -hmm. Upper Susquehanna River, that would smash them. Yeah. It says that it's a elastic, so I looked, you should get a lot of, I lot of fish out I of looked, it. I looked at that bait, I looked at that bait too. The Ned Rig is like, the. it's the year of the Ned Rig. It is the year yeah. of the Ned Rig. I like the packaging on that thing. I yeah, there's a lot going into that. But I can't even barely get it open. It's like I a DVD. All right, so listen. What do you got, Beck? I got the hula popper. Oh, yeah. bringing it back. Ooh. Now, listen. Fred, what? Old school. Look, look, yeah. look at Dave. I didn't even see that <laughs> yo, in there. Yo, you said hula popper. Dave's in the back like, oh. <laughs> but listen, <laughs> because of Dave's joke about me earlier and all the peacocks that gave their feathers, Yeah. I, I picked this because I feel like it's got live hackle. this hula popper, although yeah. this will horrify all of you. It inspires me to dress like this tomorrow. Wow. Like I feel like, dress like a hula I need popper. to look like this hula popper tomorrow. Because they're carved from that, like... That, that's OG Fred Arbogast just that's re OG. redoing it. Big she, time. How Tell many the, fish up the hula popper was? Big time. That OG. Is, I, it, premiere. Honestly, I did not Kmart. see that. Or I would have picked that. Wow. That's Becky weird. likes them because they're carved yeah. from black rhino horn, the rarest animal on earth. It's <laughs> <laughs> the only reason she uses it. <laughs> and then the, yo, Dave, the butler carved them, too. The butler carved the rhino horn. Benson. Benson, Benson goes out and spears the, the rhino for All right. her. I think, we have another, I think we have another caller. Is that correct? We do. All right. Let's we patch do. a caller through. Correct. Make it good, caller. He's, All right. Let's patch him through. He's coming through right now. All right. I think. I hope. All right, caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. <laughs> caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Hi, caller, what's your name? Where are you calling Eddie from? Eddie Cowan. I got a question Eddie, for Dave Eddie Cowan. Eddie Cowan! Eddie Cowan! Eddie Ed! Yeah, I, I want to know if Keith is ready to uphold the Cowan tradition of going to a classic every 14 years. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a big name. You gotta, you I'm gotta. Glad he, I can only be so proud to follow in your two two time qualifying yes. yeah. footsteps. Wow! Give it up for Ed Cowan. Ed Cowan. Yeah. Yes. He kicked everybody's ass at Epcot, I think. <laughs> uh, Ed, Ed, let's. I want to hear from your words. We talked about it earlier in the show, but talk how. It's the hardest thing in the world to make the classic through the Federation. I've said that for years. Pete, you've said that for years. Talk a little bit about that, Ed, because you've done it twice. It's killer impossible. Talk about that, the, 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 how hard it is to climb that ladder through the Federation ranks or through the nation ranks. Well, it's hard, but it's not because it's not a big financial burden. It's not a burden on your family. Yeah. 
I think I believe if you honestly that good that you deserve to get to a classic. If you keep at the federation long enough, you'll get there. I know you made it there yourself the first time, Mike, like that, and uh, certainly went on to prove that you were worthy of going to the classic. So, um, and then uh, the one to really ask about it is um, Bob Soley because he went to the classic the first time as a pro, and then it took him seven more years to get there as a as a federation angler. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. But but I mean, it's um, you know, it's a great thing to do. You can do. A, you know, the beautiful thing about fishing is that you can do it at, like, any level. And, uh, you know, you can fish off the bank with a worm or yeah. a bluegill, or you can, you know, do what you do. Yeah. But, uh, and the federa- you know, the Federation is a great thing. You get a club, and you can go as far as you can go. It, hey. is, the, it is the beauty of the sport. Ed, yeah. Ed, Ed it's, it, you know, it's been awesome being around you. I've known you for years. Um, and I know Keith is embarking on this practice round and and trying to get there. A uh, piece of advice for for Keith as he as he moves through this transition. Um, just keep doing what he's doing. I mean, you know, uh, I'm I think he's I know Keith for a while. Incidentally, we're not related. <laughs> Stop that! I've been playing that for years. Are you sure? Are you yeah. sure you guys look so much alike? He's <laughs> like six five. At least. <laughs> he is a handsome devil, isn't he? <laughs> Face only a mother could love that. <laughs> now here's here's I want to call you a plate on something, Ed. And uh, this is, it's, it, we got a lot of people watching that don't realize this, but I want to give you some credit. You are, and in, in my, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to say one of the first ones I've ever seen in my life punch a heavy weight, whether it was a heavy uh, Texas rig or a heavy jig. You were the first guy I saw punch before punching was punching. Before it was a thing, do you ever get pissed off now, like watching these guys and read, you know, you're reading the articles and there's punch experts and this guy and this, dude, they're 10, 15, 20 years later than when you started this thing. Do you ever get mad about that? Uh, you just got to keep involved. But I got a real funny story about that. I was actually, uh, did a seminar, I think it was 91 or 92. 1892, if I was Pete Rockin'. <laughs> the year Pete was born. Yeah, me and you. Yeah, the year Pete, Pete was born. <laughs> yeah, I was at a ranger dealer with uh, Guido Hibden, and his his whole thing was uh, throwing a jig that fell real real slow, and, you know, he'd been angling a year. And I basically went up there and said, oh, he's all wrong. You want to drop like a rock. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You do. I, I, Fast I, fall rate. I learned fall rate from Ed. Yeah. In, in one of our, yeah, well, in the, we won Lake George. You were the captain at Lake George when we won. Uh, but I, I, I learned about uh, you know the important. You talked about it like you want that that really fast fall, and and I use that. I use that to win on oh, on, yeah. on the highest level that I yeah. fished in, and oh, uh, sure. and that was amazing. But you know what? The one thing that Ed was ahead of the curve in. Especially in this region, he was he was a sight fisherman. He was a before, bed fisherman before sight fishing was a thing. We 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 all ran from it. I ran from it. I hated it. We we hated it. We ran from it. And Ed, you you were able to catch fish sight fishing off the beds before anybody ever knew. Yeah, yeah. That was actually it was um, ninety one. That's how I got to the first classic. Because he's six five, he see way further. Away. That drives me more crazy. Uh. So he cheated. <laughs> <laughs> he's you're too tall. That's not. It's unfair. It is. Oh, it, it drives me crazy now because you know now that I'm even older than Pete, I can't see the things anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for admitting that. <laughs> well, how many can say that? <laughs> Yeah, there's actually somebody older than Pete. It's amazing. Yeah. Now, the funniest story I heard about uh, about you, Ed, sight fishing, and I don't know if this is true because this is before, I think this is a couple years before I came through the New Jersey Federation, is I heard a story that they were on the beds at Candlewood, and 
you know, you were practicing, everybody was practicing right before the event, and they were on the bed so good that you went around and purposely stuck all the fish like two or three times to make them a little tricky gone into the tournament. Can you confirm or deny that rumor? I, I didn't only do it at Candlewood. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Best answer we ever That's got. Awesome. Wow. Yes. I'm going to catch you this one. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> defense. Defense, yes. Eddie. Defense. Wow. wow. Probably took... That's probably why it took you a while to pick up on how to bed fish. <laughs> These some bitches don't bite. They don't bite. They suck. They run from Dumb. the lure. <laughs> and they got red lips. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. Wow. Well, well, well Keith's supposed, supposed to be the star of your show there, so congratulations, Keith, and go get him. Thanks, right Eddie. You're uh, Ed Callen, everybody. You are yeah. Thank, you, Thank you, Eddie. Okay, bye. That was awesome. That was, that was cool. Cool. Wow. That? We probably should have asked Ed who his ride or die is. He probably could have answered. We pro- yeah. It's, it's, he he would have known. Nancy, that. his wife Nancy. Yeah, yeah, it is. Ed and Nancy. Do we well, need to have Ed in the studio one time? Yeah. Do you think he would come Why in? Uh, he, Brian Carpenter, you think he would yeah. come in? Yeah. Oh, he would he's come in. still talk making baits. What? He? He's yes. still making baits. Dude. His own jigs. He, he just made his uh, frog buzz bait. Like, he's... He's, he's so ahead of the it. curve. He gave it. me he gave, so ahead he of the gave me two buzz baits last time I over in the Delaware River. Really? Yeah, he gave me a couple of uh, you know, and I it, they're awesome. Wow. You know, I put the uh what is it, the Zoom horny tail on there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's oh, got the twist Yeah, it, on. It, it, he's got a dial. Wow. Yeah. He has every he's he's got his hands in a bunch of different yeah. designs that are his own. Still he's tink- so ahead of the curve. Still tinkering. So ahead of the curve. It's well, amazing. Well, I, I mean when I hear that uh, Ed Cowan put the team on a jig and spoon bite in Lake George in... And 100 feet of water. Yeah, but what year? Yeah. I mean, come on. 93, yeah, 4, man, 5. Yeah. On, yeah. See, I had, I had, di- I had a water. different interaction with him. No, no, nobody showed Oh, nobody Dave showed had a different Ed interaction with Ed. What so, do you, what'd you have? So one time I'm camping <laughs> down on Bugs Island, <laughs> and it's me, Melanie, and Gabby, my, my late dog. God bless her, right? <laughs> so... God bless her. I'm in like camping at uh, Okanichi <laughs> State Park, right up 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 river, right? Are you at a tournament or are you just No, camping? I'm just down there fishing. Up river, Pete. Yeah. But I got I got my campsites like right on one of them little coves, you know, little yeah. tiny coves that there's millions of them in Bugs Island. Anyway, he comes into my cove. <laughs> I'm sitting there just having beer. And he gave me his resume from the minute he entered the cove to the minute he left. I knew everything about the guy, and I'll never forget his name, Ed Callen. And he just told me nothing about himself. He didn't ask me where I was from or what my name was. He just told me about himself from the minute he came in. He told in, you the how he awesome left. he was. He, he just he all his flipped his way into he the congr- cove. He, left. he congratulated himself all through the cove and left, dude. <laughs> That's my interaction. Dude, dude, hey, I'm, I got a good. I'm, I'm Ed Cowan, bitches. Exactly, <laughs> dude. So listen, I got I got, I got a great I am question from uh, where the hell is he? Wrong. Matt in Wisconsin. I, mean, I think it's Why Matt. Why are they all in Wisconsin? Because that's only maybe it ain't Matt. Hang on a minute. It's from Tutapazi Winery. So this guy just shit on my invention. Showtime ninety nine just ripped me. Um, <laughs> hang on. Yeah, Matt. Matt wants to know. We asked everybody what their memorable moments are. He wants to know what. Everyone's memorable moments oh, are here. Good one. So good, I'll, good one. I already had time Great. to think about this. I wrote this. some of mine down. Yeah. Oh, you already you did, Pete. Oh, yeah. Pete did homework. All right, yeah. Pete. Go, wow. Pete. Go ahead, Most Pete. memorable moments Fire away. from well, this studio. Wow. I mean, I don't have anything emotional or significant, but I just oh. remember a few things. Uh-oh. Like number one, trying to communicate with Brian was a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he never answered. <laughs> What? Like you wait mean, a the minute, glass? like you're yeah. in the studio, yeah, like he's through the right, glass, he's right there, he's he's like he's flagging us down, <laughs> and, and we're trying to talk, and and he and we were and he was like we decided he should have a noteboard, <laughs> a whiteboard, a to whiteboard. write on <laughs> to tell us when it's commercial break. <laughs> Or when we need to take a call. We've tried so many things. <laughs> Promise he'd always He's write. He'd always do giant penis symbols <laughs> through the window, and it wouldn't mean anything. Oh my God. You and would he, just see it, and you'd be like, hey, "What's can that you mean? read this?" <laughs> yeah. Get yeah. these balls. Get these balls. Oh. Okay. What else you got, Pete? I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure. It was on in the last show. Uh, I remember, and and we're better at this now, but. We talked over each other like crazy. <laughs> We're like, slightly better. Oh yeah. It was slightly better. It's slightly. like like I, I from I, I've learned to just like I go uh, 
It's, it's got, people probably think it's an audio glitch because I'm always going like, uh. Dave's talking, uh. Mike's talking, uh. Riz has got some. So you learn, you learn to be patient mm -hmm. and let let somebody say their piece. And yeah. We had we we had no idea how no. to do that early on. No. Oh, we were just arr, no. we were just noise. No, the show, the show noise. found itself. The yes. show definitely found itself. It evolved into what the show is now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm proud of that. Yeah. I'm very proud of that. I remember Becky always used to be here. I like your voice. Yeah. Thank you. I like your, your despite your, Eric not, the intern trying to write you off the show. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to write you out of history. Yeah. Back. I have less of a one nine hundred voice. It's getting a little yeah. better slowly <laughs> right now. But I but I'll tell you the first moment, my moment of Ike Live Ooh. was uh was the first show. Wow. Was the very, very first show. And 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 for you guys that didn't never heard this story before, uh, Mike's like, come on over. You know, I want you to talk about Bass University. I'm like, okay, like to you, or you know, who the hell am I talking to about what's going on at Bass University? So, so I like, you know, I'm supposed to be here at seven, so I show up at like six fifty nine, and uh, <laughs> on time, on time, <laughs> on time, and uh, and I'm like, all right, I'm ready, and and they're like, just go sit out at the bar, and I'm like. And they close the door. <laughs> so the door's closed. I'm sitting out at the freaking bar. And I'm like, I'm Pete Gluzak, bitches. <laughs> Where's the Captain Morgan? What What am I doing sitting out at the bar? But but fortunately, there was Captain Morgan. <laughs> so, so I sat out there, and I, I painfully listened to the... You know what was happening in the in the studio? Sully? It was bad. <laughs> it was Ed. Ah, wasn't Ed. it Ed Bassmaster? Yeah, nah, it was no. bad. Was it the first one was with Ed? The yep. first one was with Ed, wasn't it? I don't know. All I wasn't the, invited, the so I don't know. Were really the bad. first five were really bad. They were awful. Trent Cole, but I, uh, yeah, 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 um, it wasn't Trent's fault. Dude, Randy Randy Howell was our first guest. Uh, he held us hostage. Oh my God! Yeah, dude, he was trying to harvest our soul the entire time. It was all Jesus, dude, like the whole time. Oh, trying to harvest our soul. I think I, I think I won his boat five times. Yeah, but no, no, no but, offense to Randy. But I, I I came in, and I'm like, I sit here and like, what the frick is going? All right, well, we're in some kind of studio. I didn't know we had a studio. I didn't know there was cameras. I didn't know. I, I didn't know we were doing a show. I thought we were talking about Bass University, and um, and so we, you know, I did that, did that kind of thing, and uh, it was amazing that you know all of a sudden you know it's been six years of it's doing crazy. This, you wow, know? Yeah. wow, and tens of people are. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Up to eleven now. Eleven. It's crazy. All right, so let's try to keep it to one thing. One thing. <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep it to two. All I'll right. keep it to two. The Halloween specials. Oh, I yeah. love. Oh I man, love. that was yeah. mine. I love. Oh, I'm sorry. I love. I love the fact that we can we can dress up. Pete, we dress up. We dress you up more than anybody. That makes me so we, uncomfortable. I know. That's what I love about it. We do Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas with you. We do all the yeah. holidays with you. Oh my God, the costumes! Yeah. It's like yeah, the I'd like. Turkey. Yeah, I'm like sitting here. Christmas take, I'm getting ready for notes. We got this gas. I'm just, and, and I come in and Becky's got a wig for me. Oh yeah, and a skirt. Yeah. And pilgrim like, suit. Are you oh, kidding me? The Dude, pilgrims. I, that was the best. That's the pilgrims. That it was pilgrims. The pilgrims. You were a turkey. The the wrestle, the wrestling. Ah, the wrestling. So many I good forgot ones. about Star that. Star Trek, the one Star time. Trek. There's so <laughs> many. Oh good yeah, ones. dude. All the Halloween specials, and then that show right there. Yeah. Mark oh, McCallan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that show yeah, was yeah. was deep. Yeah. That was one of the deepest shows we ever did. And then sure. the part that the people didn't hear was the best part of that night. Yeah. We went out to the bar that night. We were out there for three hours. Talking to those guys yeah. about their life and their story, and oh, it was, it was deep. Yeah. It was really deep, and I'm yeah. glad we have that right there. That's so, awesome. It's a good bring, reminder. I was going to bring that night up. Yeah, that, that, was, that was by far one of the best. That was pretty amazing. And then um, a, a, another one off the, off the cuff is Pete. I think after your father had an episode, mm. I remember it was yeah, it was like yeah. you know we're all in here horse, you know playing like yeah, messing around. All of a sudden it got serious, and I can remember like, you know be. 
you know, yeah. like just being like, all right, yeah, you know, let's get behind. That me. was a great show. I was. Yeah. That was dad, a great show. Remember. Dad, dad's still with us. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Dad, dad's. Uh, it's been four years since his heart attack. Yeah, as if it never happened. I, I can just that? remember it was, it was real. You know, you felt it at home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you felt it at home. Yeah. Like, and you know, just being a longtime fan, one of the. Yeah. You know, show one, one yeah. of ten, or whatever. We yeah, are. I mean, yeah, it's come a long way, and it's yeah. It, it's cool. It's, and we have had you. some good after hours together yeah. too, by the yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Brian I, I, I Carpenter we here, one <laughs> yeah. show three or something. Yeah, I think Be- we had. A- Becky was like, "That's Ed." Oh yeah. <laughs> We had an after hours where there was a lot of stuff involved, alcohol and other stuff, and I out in the cornfield. And I yeah, would never corn, do that again bite. because it was. We got it in here. And we we're all just like. <laughs> <laughs> it was I re- a long break. It was a long break. <laughs> I, rem- I remember. I remember. Like as I was so worried about what would happen to sponsorships, and and I didn't. I didn't know what was going to happen. So as soon as after hours started. I left. <laughs> that's probably smart. smart. I did that like for the first two years. Very, very smart. And how'd yeah. that, wor- how'd that work out? <laughs> Good move. <laughs> Worked out okay. No, but but the reverse, the other side of the coin though, Pete, is Ike Live has been great. Like I, I've been at tournaments. I've been at shows. I've been places where people don't say, hey, good job in the MLF. Good job at Bassmaster Classic. Good job. You know, nice show. Nice Fish My City show. They say, Good show, a good Ike live show last night. Yeah, That's the yeah. first thing they say. That's oh, awesome, dude. It's awesome. I got a comment. I got a comment. Like when you go out into the fishing world now, yeah, it's like everybody, everybody, like you see at their launch ramp, they're like Pete Kluzek bitches. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know? they know it. They know it. They want to say it. They want to yell it. <laughs> it's everywhere you wow. go. Like people comment on the interviews yeah. that we have, and it, it, it's it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, how the, long? How long till you think they'll get your new tagline down? What is it, Captain Pete Kluzek? <laughs> um, Captain Pete Kluzek bitches. No, there'll be a, there'll be a meme by Monday, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and here, and t- taking that to a different level. Uh, uh, going back to Brian in the booth, we want to get yours. But before you do that, who'd ever thought, you know, six years ago, Brian the Carpenter signing autographs at the Bassmaster Classic? <laughs> like, it's going out of style. Right. Brian the Carpenter signing hey, autographs. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, I mean, Brian, this thing started as like Brian's little, hey, let's see where it goes. Yeah. He puts, he yeah. puts, he puts Brian, all, he yeah. puts Brian, you've done a great it. job. That's a great job. Everybody you're the, call, you're a great producer. Week, 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 you're a great month. producer, yeah. brother. He's all in. You're a great producer. <laughs> Mark, Mark Jeffries having the vision. Yes. Brian stepping up. Big shout up. out to Mark Jeffries. Yeah. Big shout out you to Mark. You two guys. Thank you, Mark. Put this together. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Point <laughs> at him. That's Harry Houdini. <laughs> That's Mark. Is it Harry Houdini? I think it is. I think you're right. Yeah. Is it? I yeah. think Pete's right. It's I think not it as is. fun. Can we just be Mark Jeffries? <laughs> no, <it's laughs> yeah. Harry Houdini. Although that might be worth <laughs> more if it's Harry, <laughs> Harry Houdini. Yeah. yeah, you probably picked up the only portrait of Harry Houdini at a friggin' at the Berlin Mart. <laughs> it's priceless. Priceless. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Son of a bitch. You, you know, know he did. <laughs> Bry, favorite memory? I got favorite six years. memory. Oh, man, so many. Like you said, the Mark McCallan episode. Um, it's a good one. Yeah. Uh, might be might be the favorite. Uh, what about the Ike Live? Hold on. What about the Ike Live Super Special? The first Ike Foundation tournament oh, where we oh had like God. thirty guys come through. We were on the air for like six hours. That Dude. was exhausting. That was amazing, though. That was amazing. That was amazing. Having Kevin Van Dam in the room. Mark was Mark here. Zona was Zona here. Was here. Jeffries. Mercer was Wasn't here. Wasn't Mercer? Dave Mercer was yeah, here. Mercer was Mercer? here. Yeah, Mercer. Remember that? all them guys here. That was insane. Yeah. Who else okay. has been in studio? You know what? You know what sticks out in my Marizo, mind. Marizo, and 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 Cliff Crochet. That yeah. night was, was one of my favorite. Oh, <laughs> good I, one, dude. That's still one of my all-time favorites. We got one. we got Marizo to say lobster claw. <laughs> lobster. <laughs> lobster claw, yeah, dude. It was set up that way. I remember we had to say you had me at Haram Lobster. Why you gotta ruin it? No, no. Dave, Dave does not ruin it. No, he man. brings the comic relief. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, come on. No. You had me at Haram. You had me. 
<laughs> Dude. <laughs> what was that show? Uh, where we had to read lines the from rumor? the movies. You guys did that a hand. Movie scripts. Times. Yeah, movie we script. did the movie we script that, thing. We, we need to bring one. we need to bring that back. Yeah. That was that was created solely because we had Marizo in and it was solely to find as many movie quotes that people would recognize <laughs> that had the letter L in it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and ours. <laughs> Yeah, and I got to say, we've been through a lot of interns. We've been through some great interns, but we've got another one working with us right now. It's going to be the best right there. I agree. It comes from good lineage. (laughs) Good lineage. Good lineage. Dave? So, I mean, you know, uh, for me, uh, having Mark, you know, he passed away. You know, we all got to experience him a little bit. Brian did a great job finding those guys and and getting them in here and, uh, for, yeah, that's definitely for me the best one. Yeah, because I don't really, I don't really care much about sports guys. Like you know, those kinds of guys are the ones that when they talk, I listen to what they have to say. Yeah, they see some shit. You know, and yeah, uh, yeah God, like Cliff and Cliff and Marizu, like you guys all named the ones that I think. Yeah. Are some Mel- of the we best had the Miller ones. brothers in. Miller brothers, uh, yeah. Miller brothers yeah. was a good show. Oh yeah, dude. It was a great show. We're out there wrestling and getting. Uh, choked oh out. yeah. I got choked out by Dan Miller. My throat hurt for a week, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember when I tapped out, tapping his 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 ankle, and his, his like, ankle bone was like this big around. <laughs> like, like, yeah, was, I know. I'm the same way. I'm like, dude, I'm tapping out. I'm tapping out. Oh. Watch it. It was relentless. You know what? Both what? of them were some so amazingly delayed strong. Is what they were strong. way delayed. I'm so, choking. My Adam's apple's going down my stomach. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm uncle, like, where do uncle, I, uncle? Where do I gotta tap, dude? <laughs> tap, tap. What's the game? Well, wait. Do we so, still have this? We have the purple singlet in here somewhere. <laughs> from that uh, show. Back here. Is yeah. it back there? You know, somewhere? another good moment, and it, it was. It wasn't a whole segment, but it, well, it was a segment, but it wasn't a whole there show. Goes. There it goes put the it purple on, singlet. Put it on, Zach. Singlet. <laughs> yeah. Pete, Pete, well, smell that. Smell the crotch of that. Yeah. Real quick. I'll, Tell I'll me get, how it is. I'll get right on that. <laughs> now, but I liked when Brian caught you off guard, Mike, with Denny Brower. Oh, watching your reaction, you know, because I, you know, he yeah. and I knew from you know twenty, thirty yeah. years ago how much you subscribed yeah, to that I, dude, man. I, I, in this show, I haven't, I haven't been speechless very often. In fact, I go long. I say too, like the intro tonight. I, too much. I talk a lot. <laughs> yeah, true that. But I remember being really speechless yeah. when Denny came on. And yeah, no, if, if Rick Klon ever came on, uh, I think I'd be the same way. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say a single how word. Many like, uh, how many tournaments? How many Bassmasters tournaments has Denny Brower won? Is that a trivia question? I know Thousand? the number. I know the number. number. I heard it on Bassmasters Live today. Twenty-seven. That's high. Oh. See, remember back in the day when Pete used to always give us this trivia? Seventeen. Was it <laughs> <laughs> Mike, wow. You win a piece of uh, memorabilia. Piece I do. Yeah. You win the balls, dude. That's a, that's. I take the scroll. Seventeen. Sack. That's got to be like second or third. Wow. On wow. all time that's wins. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So here's a good one, Matt from Wisconsin. BTC hands down a class act. One hell of a guy. I'm going to get a little sentimental. My son passed away last October, <laughs> and he checked up on me. And he checked with my buddy Jesse and how I was doing. Never met the man, but consider him a friend. Love the show and everyone on it. It's fun and a uh, laugh and uh, is real all the time. I sit here watching, feeling like one of the crew. Can't wait to see uh, see here, uh, see here, where Ike Live goes. A little typo. But, wow. but it, isn't that, Brian, when you were first creating this thing? Great you, follower. That's yeah. Brian said he wants to make it feel like people are sitting in the room with everybody. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. you and Brian Bunn and just saying Brian, both yeah. of you guys, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I good mean, work, it, Brian. It's, it's good real. Work, Brian. Nothing nice about this is fake. No. Never, it yeah. never has been. Yeah, it's awesome. That's probably since I'm not allowed to speak, I don't get asked questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> what well, was Becky's favorite moment? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, babe. <laughs> Your favorite moment, Miss Rebecca? I, well, I would say that. Like, I'm glad that somebody. You know, send an I am at I am at about I am in about that. Wow, that was tough yeah. to say. Um, but I but I think that's the biggest thing. I appreciate that. You know, like everyone here, it's it's real, it's fun. Like we kind of say the inappropriate, funny stuff that we say to each other all the time. And um, the the one memory that Brian is probably going to hate me for bringing this up was one of the first shows. He lined up a high school class. 
and they never, they never came on. They bailed. They, they saw the beginning they of the show. Oh my god! And they they oh got my god! To be so offensive <laughs> that they bailed. And yeah, because on. it was like a Christian high school. <laughs> oh my god! And Becky, they heard like genius. three f bombs and a pussy and a dick, no. and they bailed. <laughs> you're it was right, gone. dude. The, like, There's only ten viewers. Ah uh, no! <laughs> but no, that's, that's probably awesome. something that no one remembers. No, I do. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. Didn't the coach come on and say, he just, yeah. he just texted Brian yeah. like, we he's can't like, yeah. come on. Yeah. He's like, dude, I'm out. I got the faculty watching. I'm out. <laughs> Mike come on and he was talking about I was mad for the first time. Was I mad that night? Yeah, I thought mad. I was a little. I uh, know you weren't that bad. I mean, maybe for uh, you were dry uh, humping stuff. Uh, <laughs> he right. was, dude. And the best is Brian told him at the beginning of the show, "Whatever you do, just mind your p's and q's." I lined up these high school kids, uh, and you went like, "Wow!" Polar dude. opposite of yeah, kind of like, like yep. "Hey, Mike, we got Rue the bass dog." Don't know how long it's going to sit still. Here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> Hour long intro. Long. <laughs> keep going. Keep Almost going. Like, Fuck longest you, longest intro this of all time. time. <laughs> I was sweating with that, that intro. Like I literally thought Rue was going to get up, and yeah. I was trying to like, sweat. I was no, so nervous. Rue's like a we're good not dog. even going to in interview. Rue's a good dog. Rue's not going to get up. Dude, oh, okay. I I gotta good say, dog. when you ask Rue the dog the first question, and Carl's voice came across. <laughs> That, that, was, that, was that was genius, dude. That was, that was genius. That was I thought, genius. I really thought it was going to be Kayla since Rue was a female. So when Carl spoke, I did. I almost died. That was so good. All right. All right we got to call her. Call her. What's your name? Caller's been there for an hour. Caller's been there for an hour. <laughs> All right. Caller, thank you for dealing with that. What's your name? Where you call from? No worries. Uh, Dan from Burning, Texas. Dan. Just had a question Texas. for Ike. Uh, big fan. I wondered uh, throughout the year uh, on the other derby, have you seen like one of the stops that they went to that you're like, man, I wish I could fish that event? And uh, a second question is, um, you've always been in contention for the classic every year. Is it going to be weird? How weird is it going to be not fishing that event? Yeah, two two really good questions. Uh, I I think every stop of the Bassmaster Trail this year, the Bassmaster Elites, I watched them all in one regard or another, and I wanted to be at all of them. So there's, I, I wanted to be at all of them, not just one, you okay. know? Uh, I mean, if I had to pick one, uh, yeah, St. John's, you know, because of all the big oh, yeah. fish, you know, for sure. Um, is it going to be weird not being fishing in the Classic? Absolutely. It's a weird thing. It's the first time, this will be the first time in 19 years, wow. 18 or 19 years. That I haven't fished the Bassmaster Classic. That's weird. I, I, I hate that you won an open. I won an open. Not, yeah. I mean, it's total bullshit. I know. I mean, I, I, I know. can't. I'm sure yeah. all your fans can yeah. say yeah. the same thing. No, but. it's okay. It's okay. And and it's going to be weird. But at the same time, let me turn it into a positive, which is this year I'll be able to work for my sponsors, especially Bash University and Ike Live and the Ike Foundation. I'll get to have more of a, a role yeah, we'll at see. At the out the outdoor show. Yeah, and I'm we'll excited see. about that. Brian's like, we'll see. We'll Brian see. said, we'll see. I'm we'll excited get, about that. We'll get you for thirty seconds. No, no, that's not true. It better be better than Icast, Becky. No, it'll be better. It'll be better. It'll be better. So <laughs> Janet. Yeah, yeah. I'm, right on. Yeah, she yeah. won't even look at me. <laughs> yeah, Becky and Janet. And you never know. I I I'm really good with disguises. So if I show up as one of the elite anglers and start fishing, who knows? You know. Love <laughs> <laughs> well, it, man. Well. Awesome show. Just appreciate uh, all y'all do. Thank you, caller. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. Yeah, it sucks because you have to kind of forfeit. So you have the longest running streak right now. I, I know. That's why of it's consecutive um, yeah. classic appearances. Ne never to be broken. I hope not. I mean, who's in second with well, that? Well, the, the, the current. Well, yeah, the well current. Kev Kevin the current. has the longest. The okay. longest. Right. Uh, the current. Yeah. You got, you're going to be the second in second place. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm always behind Kevin, so that's that's perfect. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, you know what was key on this show, worse. which I think was awesome, is how we've been able to get the uh, the movers and shakers in the business. Yeah. We've interviewed them all. Yeah. Jeremy McInnes. Yes. Boyd Duckett. Yeah. Um, who else? Uh, Everybody Kevin, else. Zona. We've had them all. Skeet. We even got Skeet on one time. 
Yeah. How the hell do we do that? That was incredible. Did yeah. somebody say boy duck it? Yes. <laughs> Glide. Glide. Glide live. What, 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 what happened with uh, Carl and Boyd? They moved. Uh, getting too close to each other, wasn't it? So? Yeah. yeah, they got oh. a little tough Oh, of, I remember uh, that. So, I remember uh, that. My yeah. sport. One of the rivers. Yeah. My yeah. sport. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Uh, we got another caller here, Brian. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Hi, Hi caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Pat Renwick. How are you? Pat! Oh, Whoa! What's going on, guys? How you doing tonight? Now, here's the bad news. You're going to have Brian what? in studio in a couple yes, weeks. Yes, yes, actually. That's I, terrible. I'm childproofing the entire house. I'm putting those <laughs> childproof locks on all the cabinets. You need to. I'm hiding the mouse poison, so we'll be fine. Hide your wife, hide your daughters. <laughs> hide your wife, hide, hide your the kids. Whole Save the women and children first. Because they're raping everybody out here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm at one of your favorite places, Mike Lake St. Clair, right now. Woo! Are you at St. Clair? Yeah, I'm over on uh, Hanson Island. You know Hanson Island? I do know Hanson Island. Over in the river. I've been jacking pike in the swamps the last couple days. Wow. Wow. Yeah, the, the, the elites are out here, so I'm trying to stay off their playing field, you know? Yeah, yeah, you need Very to do cool. that. you got to be careful. But it's fun, man. We're having a good time. Cool. How you do? What else is going on? How's Straycast? Great cast is, is kicking butt, man. We're 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 having a great time, and uh, you know, it's just uh, we're pretty fortunate. It keeps growing and growing and growing, so I'm happy about that. I love it. Now, are you going to have Brian do anything when he's on your show? Is this going to sit there? We have a bunch of of, of circus acts in line for him. Ooh, ooh. yeah, sword we, he, You've seen the. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you've seen the sword swallower act, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who's that in the background? Is that Travis Bickle or is that Dave Brosnick back there? Travis Bickle. You know who Travis Bickle is, Dave? Nah, who's that? That's Chassis Driver. That's De Niro. Oh. That's the haircut. Yeah, you do have it a little, uh, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Dang. Are you kidding me? Are you yeah. talking, uh, okay. You're kidding me. I'm the only one here. All right, now, Pat, <laughs> Pat, here's the one contest that you can't have when Brian comes on because he'll win. Whatever you okay. do, do not run the Cacosaurus contest. Yeah, you're in trouble. <laughs> because Brian will win, hands down. Jeez. I think we're going to be practicing that uh, art. No, I got to read one thing from somebody after Pat. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> nah, Pat. Just yeah. So, it. what do you what do you have planned for? Like, what do you have yeah, planned for Brian? Uh, it's just going to be a regular straight cast show. Brian's going to try and monkey wrench it. You know that. But <laughs> I'm like the Bugs Bunny of bass fishing. We won't let that happen. Uh -huh. <laughs> or will we? Not gonna, but no, we will. It, it'll be fun. We're going off script, Pat. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Now, so like, actually, here's here's what's going to happen. See, because Brian is is, you know, like, the producer in the Bath and Biz. Like, he's the, you know, he's the go-to guy. Okay, so here's what I plan on doing, basically, is just nothing. I just plan on showing up like Mike Iaconelli or Pete Lusick. That's exactly what I do. Captain Pete. You did. That's exactly what I do. I'm just going to show up and then just talk. And here's the other thing. After the show, Brian's going to take you all the whole crew to dinner. At the Smith and Loyalist in Chicago. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. well, Highfalutin, I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like it. <laughs> on the company car. <laughs> on, that, on that straight cast car. On oh, straight cast car. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Build it back. Hey, but seriously, I'm just calling up to um to tell you guys, um, that is one of the coolest studios, uh, absolutely in the bass fishing business. The, the memorabilia that lines that wall is. Uh, is bass fishing history. It's it's purely wow. historic. That's true, wow. man. Thank you. It, it, true. it really is. And I want to thank you guys all for the for the good times and the inspiration and the living room that you give the Stray Cast Show. I thank you guys all so much. Wow. Sincerely. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Uh, uh, same goes to you. We love your show. We love you. Thank That's you. Right. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and uh, so also, I was really calling just to claim shit in the studio too. What so, do you need? What do you need? Yeah. It's yours. Um, so, um, can I get the man's hard worm, Mike? You got it. <laughs> That's yours. And then, will you sign that for me? Absolutely. It's yeah. right here. And then right I down would, the shaft. I have a special request, and this is the awesome. most sincere. Can you guys pick any piece of memorabilia from that room 
and sign it uh, to my buddy Nolan from the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. And Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yes. take anything, and if you guys could all sign it to Nolan, that would be amazing. You got it. We'll do that. Brian De Carpenter, Absolutely. make sure we remember that. We'll do that. We'll sign something in here. What do you say? Hey, hey Pat, what, is that, uh, what does that stray cast expense card well, look we'll, like? We'll uh, pay less Angler credit card? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a prepay, Dave. Yeah, Bradley's credit card. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prepay. <laughs> It's from the Wawa, so I can only get those cinnamon pretzels and hoagies. Hoagies, nice. It's cinnamon only good pretzels. There. So. Hey, Marathon Show, we're, we've been watching this whole thing, guys. We, we're in I'm this sorry. amazing house. Oh, my God, it's is. like 20 to 12. <laughs> Closing in on I know, five hours. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, Camp Dad and Tommy Billy was going to come watching. on. Yeah, Holy thing. shit. Zach's yeah. like, do they do this? Every time We've been it's not like We're this. not getting an intern you It's guys. normally a three hour show We're it's, so Well that's sorry. a lie It's not a three hour oh, show Oh it's a three and a half hour show <laughs> Yeah, yeah tr- Tommy drank a whole uh, fifth of uh, Tito's vodka He was going to talk to you guys <laughs> So you missed that out Wake him up But hey uh, Great show Please I'm looking forward to so many more years from you guys Keep up the amazing work You're an inspiration to everybody Thanks, Thank, you, Pat. Pat. Thank you Pat Thank you Pat Hey Redwick everybody Pat Yo Pat Wow. Brian hey. Carpenter, it's late. I know. We need to call it. One thing real quick. Favorite moment. Dave from Wisconsin. When you <laughs> strung Wisconsin. when you strung everyone along for four hours on yeah. your on your oh. announcement and, oh, and cut one. it off just for you to announce it two days later. He, he was, was a big a fan one. of that one, dude. That well, was a good one. Tell him to send his info in. Oh, yeah. Dave, Dave sure send your best. info in. I won't that put it through. One. Brian Carpenter, we were in cahoots on that one. Yes. You came up with the so mad at you. You came but, up with yes, that. That was yeah, funny. That was like the Sopranos. Oh, uh, it was so good. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. Keith. I got so my people good. actually just thought that the like they were so cut mad. out. I know. Here's the thing. So I was going to say real quick. Me and Mike, when 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 Mike hit me with that, he's like, "This is what I want to do. Just trust me." I'm like, "All right, I love it. I'll, we'll do it." And I loved it. I, you know, I love a good prank. <laughs> and it reminded me of when South Park did this um, uh, uh, April Fool's joke. And it was all about trying to find who Cartman's uh, father was. And they strung this and they built this whole thing up. And when it came to they were going to announce Cartman's father at the beginning of this episode. And then they went, April Fool's. And they went to right to a Terrence and Phillips episode. I fucking thought it was amazing. Yeah. Was dying laughing. Yeah. But, the, but everyone else hated it. Yeah. so much hate for that. So... When you hit me with that idea, I'm like, oh, my God, that's brilliant. It's just like when South Park pulled that April Fool's joke. I forgot that the rest of the world hated it. <laughs> <laughs> dude, the I funny, loved it, dude, but the rest of it, nobody, screw them idiots. Dude, people it's were so, so mad. People were so, so mad. mad. I watched the social media numbers go down after that show. Seriously, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. They uh, all went down. Unlike, unlike. Oh, yeah, unlike. like thousands of followers, they <laughs> yeah. went down. Yeah, the hate. The hate yeah, spewed. but then like the next couple of weeks, they went back up. So it didn't matter, yeah. you know? It was, it oh, was fun. Oh, I didn't sleep that night. I wanted to fight every one of them idiots. <laughs> I, you, that's awesome. I love they it. Need I, to I have don't our... have your ability to just let it roll. I just yeah. Like, it's they, a joke. Uh, they need well. to have our policy. Yeah. yeah. Make What's fun of everybody. Yeah. yeah. Not anybody. Not everybody. A, yeah. Not anybody, everybody. Uh, ourselves. Yeah, let's let's end this show real quick. Uh, give a shout out to everyone who participated in tonight's show. Peak Lusick. First and foremost, our couch guest tonight, Keith Cowan. Yeah. Going on to the Nationals at Hartwell. Oh, Thanks weeks. for having me, guys. Great time. Thank you, man. Johnny. Thank Long, you. Long time friend of the show. Dude, I, I'm so happy you were here for this show. Yeah, this is great. a this is a big show for us. And I'm yep. glad you were here for that show. So thank you. Thank you very much. Also, uh, Captain Kyle Monty joining us. Yep. Great talk to Kyle. <laughs> Captain. Captain Kyle. Oh, was great. Done. And, of course, Rue, the, the uh, super bass dog. Show stealer. And yeah. his dad. Her dad. Carl. And his dad. Her dad. Her, 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 dad. her dad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to David Mullins for, for being... A gentleman. That was cool. Badass. The a goddamn best. gentleman. The that best. was cool. That's, that was cool. That's pretty yeah. dope, man. That was cool. Sure. I didn't realize that. It's always cool. That was that. really cool. That's a great story. That was really cool. I also want to give a shout out real quick to Riz. Rich. Yes, sir. You've been doing a great job. Yes, Riz, sir. Riz, thank Absolutely. you. Riz, you're making this uh, Ike Live show even better. Thank you very much. Agreed. Uh, shout out to Zach tonight. Zach, peep your head in here Noob. to that camera right there. Just right, right here. Right there. 
There you go. Dip down. There you go. Say Give hello to yourself. everybody. There you go. Zach the intern <laughs> in the house. Show one. Zachary. Put him through the uh, put him through the ringer with a marathon show. Uh, Pete Glusick, uh, Miss Rebecca, Brian DeCarpenter, Dave Brodzik. Great show tonight. What do you think? I I I'm emotional. It was a good show. Yeah. It was a good way to end this studio. I think so. On to bigger and better things. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait to. I uh, want to thank everybody for watching and listening. Hold up. Do we need to announce the winner of for the Dyke Life Facebook? Share and like? Yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. We'll just tell you tomorrow. All right, we'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> Somebody won that thing right there. We'll have, we'll have Miss Janet figure it out. Miss Janet is going to figure out a winner of the <laughs> Ike Live Facebook share and like. Um, what else? What else? I, there, there can't be anything Good else. Good night, everybody. Can't be anything else. What do you think, Brian? Show number 98. Beck, what do you think? Number Show 98. number 98. Oh, wow. my God. Are we almost at 100? Yeah. yeah. Century mark. Two Whoa. away. Holy crap. Yeah. Two by away. The way, Halloween will be 100. Wow. That is Banger. so exciting. Dude. Pete, you got to wow. dress as Baby do we, New Year. Do we have a plan yet? I got a what? Dress as Baby New Year. Yeah, we do, but we can't announce it to you. Oh, we do the, have a plan? Okay, we have good. a plan, but we can't announce it until the show's yeah. over. All right. Great show, what? everybody. We never asked anybody for costume suggestions. Doesn't matter, because we know we're going with your ideas, yeah. so it doesn't okay. matter. All right. <laughs> I hope everybody had a great <laughs> Sunday night. I know we did. Thank you for watching. Ike Live. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ah! <laughs>